Hi, I'm Ricky, and I'm on a mission to build the most sustainable house. That means producing our electricity, ditching natural gas, and eventually figuring out water. But we bought this new house because there's a second house where we run our business out of. But it came with a huge problem. It has really ancient electrical built back in the early 70s. And there's a bunch of old equipment and other stuff. So when EcoFlow reached out and said, hey, Ricky, you want to check out this EcoFlow smart home panel? We said, heck yeah because we knew this was an issue and this was just the motivation we needed to finally get out there and fix this. So full disclosure, EcoFlow did send us a smart home panel, but we had to pay for the installation and materials and everything else. And our opinions are our own. Also, this video is for entertainment purposes only. Hire licensed contractors, electricians for all your work, and we're not responsible for anything that you might do. So at the core of our electrical issues is old wiring, which is not especially safe and prone to fire issues, and it's ungrounded, which means that all of our electronics aren't grounded when we plug them in. Secondly, they're all kind of undersized. They're 15 amp circuits, which limits how much power you can draw. So we wanted to upgrade all that and go with modern Romex wire and 20 amp circuits. So that's exactly what we did. Okay, so the walls are all clear, the floors are clear. Next up is the dirty and the part that I'm not looking forward to, which is getting under the house and replacing all this older style electrical wire. And just as we noticed, there's no ground wire. It's just neutral and load. And that's what the issue is with this old style wiring. So we're gonna rip all this out, replace it with this here, which is 12 gauge, 20 amp rated, Romex. So what we're gonna do, I think, is unscrew all these outlets, unwire them, pull this down, see where it leads, pull it all out, and then replace it with new wire. All right, so part of building the most sustainable home is getting rid of all the natural gas. So this was the heater we had before, and Brim and Juan had complained that when they ran it in the winter, they gave them a headache. So I think there's just maybe a little bit of a leak. It's old, doesn't really matter. We're ripping this whole thing out. So this line here, Look at how bad this looks. You see how it's falling apart? This is just a fire hazard waiting to happen. This is turning into an absolute nightmare. I knew that we'd find crazy stuff down here. Old houses always do. But there's a ton of absolute crap. Like, for example, look at this. You have like four different wire seams all butted up, not in a junction box, just kind of wired up and taped. <sighs> and it's turning into a far bigger project than I thought it was gonna be. I was thinking one day, get in, get out, but we're on day two, is that right? We're on day two and I'm thinking there's gonna be another day. So really, the electrical loan's gonna be taking up three days, which is gonna come out of Juan's budget. What? Sorry, Juan. We were able to successfully remove all the old stuff. If you get in tight here, take a look. So this is how they used to make the wire. It was braided, but you see, look at this area that I pulled out. It was completely unprotected. Now. You know, there's nothing actively rubbing. It's not like there's an airplane where it's vibrating or anything, but still, this is completely unprotected. And look at how bad this was. We've also upgraded a lot of these 15 amp lines to new 20 amp lines. So that means in the kitchen, we now have two 20 amp circuits instead of two 15 amp circuits, which means you have an extra 500 watts you can pull. The living room where the team will be working out of is a 20 amp circuit. The studio where we record in, 20 amp circuit. So between that upgrade and all new electrical, we're looking pretty good. Now, the next step will be to prepare the area to the left of the service panel for the EcoFlow. I feel like somebody's gonna call me out on my painting. I don't know how to paint. It's probably gonna be Claudia too. I'm sorry, Claudia.
Now let's talk about exactly how the smart home panel works. It attaches to the side of your main electrical service panel. Here in the US, you'll typically have two 120 volt lines coming into your panel, where these trunk lines are distributed throughout your house via branch circuits. Next, circuit breakers are installed on the bus bars of the service panel. Each circuit breaker will alternate between the legs of the 120 volt service it connects to. The purpose of a circuit breaker is to mechanically switch off a circuit if it detects it's drawing too much power. Everything in your system needs to be sized correctly. For example, a 20 amp circuit breaker will trip and turn off if it detects more than 20 amps are being drawn for a period of time. This protects the wires, which also need to be sized for 20 amp, as thicker wires can carry more load without overheating. Without a circuit breaker, you would risk possibly running too many things and overloading the wires and possibly causing a fire. Then electrical lines connect to each circuit breaker carrying electricity to various branch circuits in your house. With the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel, circuits aren't directly connected to the circuit breakers. Instead, each circuit breaker is fed to the appropriate input line in the Smart Home Panel wiring harness. Then on the output side, the output wires run from the Smart Home Panel back to the service panel where they get tied into the branch circuits. By doing Doing this, a smart home panel is now in control of either pulling from the grid or powering your electrical loads from the batteries. So with the smart home panel, you can power up to 10 circuits that can be backed up even if the grid goes down. You should also know you need two dedicated circuits for input to charge each of the Delta Pro batteries. Once everything is wired up, you're now good to go and the smart home panel can jump in in about 20 milliseconds to back up your home if the grid ever goes down. So we mentioned that we were going to get rid of natural gas, which means that we had to take care of a couple of pretty big appliances. One was our natural gas water heater, which actually never worked. So once we were able to get that out of here, we now have a need. We got to figure out our water heating solutions. Let me know in the comment section below. We're thinking heat pump water heater, but yeah, we're open to ideas. Second, we had an old furnace. So now that we have the furnace removed, we're all clear. We still have to do some drywalling and other finishing touches. But pretty soon we're gonna have a heat pump, heater, and air conditioner that runs on 110 watt. It's not a very big room. And I think we could fit all of that and have it run in the smart home panel. So you might be wondering, why should you care? Is this something that you should consider for your house? And that's what I wanna tackle next. So for us, we mentioned we have a lot of electrical needs. We're gonna go all electric heat pumps. And so we needed to have a pretty sizable system. Also, because it's a smaller house, we only have 10 circuits in its entirety. So this Eco Smart home panel can back up 10 circuits. So our entire house is backed up. Every outlet will now work even if the grid goes down. And we'll do some testing in just a little bit. But for you, if you have a bigger house, this might not back up the entire house. It might only be 10 circuits, right? So you'd have to pick and choose which ones you wanna run. I would recommend refrigerators, right? Maybe the lighting, maybe one of your core rooms, other critical things that you can't live without. But if you need a bigger system, you actually can install more than one of these and hook them up to batteries. But at that point, there's probably a better solution for you. This is really made for somebody who likes the portability and the modularity of this system. I mentioned I had these batteries before. So if you have a Delta Pro from EcoFlow already, well, this is a pretty reasonably priced upgrade, right? And I like this because I can unplug the cables and take this with me, go RVing or camping. So if you like modularity and you wanna be able to start with a system that you can grow on and add to in the future, this might be a good option for you. So here are two EcoFlow Delta Pros and the smart home panel. But each of these can hook up to two additional batteries. And if you were to max it out with six batteries, you'd be looking at over 20 kilowatt hours of storage. So let's talk about the pros and cons of going with this system. As I mentioned, you can get the smart panel and the battery separately, which is really nice. But these batteries do take up quite a bit of space. As you can imagine, you need about three feet because these are the ports that plug into the smart home panel and they plug in the front. You can kind of see that there. But the battery cables that plug these batteries to the add-on batteries, the smart additional extra batteries, they plug in the back. So you need to have a couple of inches behind the battery as well. Also, this cable that plugs in here to the infinity port has to be six feet from the battery. This cable is only six feet long. So you can't just have the batteries you know, in some other part of the house. It all has to kind of be together, as you can see in their diagrams. But if that scenario works for you, yeah, absolutely, just check it out. Okay, and now the moment of truth. Let's simulate a power outage. The lights are on, everything's on and connected to the grid. I'm gonna go turn off that entire service panel. One, Two, three. Do you notice anything? Anything flickering? Nope. Okay, so now if you look at the app, the green arrow representing the grid is turned off. 
which means we are powering off of the EcoFlow batteries. So currently both batteries are about 50% charge. And uh, let's see how much energy we can use. Okay, so step one, let's do two minutes on the microwave. Okay. Now we are pulling 1.6 kilowatts. Let's turn this on. This is a little air fryer, similar levels of power consumption. So now that's running. We should be around three kilowatts now. We are, there's three kilowatts, okay. Here's a space heater, which is probably about one kilowatt. Turn that on. And yep, there's 3.8 kilowatts. That'll speed up a little bit more. No, there it is, 4.3. So 4,300 watts now that we're using. Here is a industrial size heat gun. I'll put that on high. which gets us to 5.8. Where are we at? There we go, 5.8. So it takes like five or six seconds to update the numbers sometimes, depending on your internet connection possibly. So now we're at 5.8 kilowatts. Finally, a shot vac. And with all of that running, we're at 6.8 kilowatts. So 6,800 watts, which is close to the limit, but still under their max capacity. And at this rate, we would be out of energy in 29 minutes with those batteries. But that's pretty cool, right? If you have a big air conditioner or big power tools, you could run it all on those 10 circuits with this EcoFlow battery. Okay, so now maybe we'll do a transition to grid back on. I'll turn the grid back on now. Okay, the grid's back on, and seamlessly turn back. And even though the grid is on, I have it programmed. I can't even, you can't even hear me. So even when the grid came back on, the batteries were still powering everything because I have a program right here that says between midnight and 11 p.m., basically all day, power the house. So what I would do in the future is change that to say charge, for example, at midnight, and stay charged and stand by, and then run from 4 to 9 p.m. when energy prices are higher. But all that is up to you. You can program it to whatever you like and have it charge or discharge for your own personal needs. And of course, I have a power outage mode where no matter what's happening, the power goes out 20 milliseconds, which is really fast, even faster than my power wall. The power wall typically had a little bit of a light flicker. Uh, if I remember correctly, in my previous house, this was even better than that. All right, so now we've seen how it jumps in in 20 milliseconds when the power goes out and powers your house. This is super awesome, but we're not done yet. This is only actually part of the puzzle because as I mentioned, up next in a future video, subscribe and stay tuned, we're gonna build an entire enclosure out here to house all the batteries. And second, we need to add solar because as cool as this is, currently it's just battery backup or energy arbitrage, right? If you have cheaper prices at times of the day, charge these at cheap times and power your house when it's expensive. That's pretty cool. But for us, I wanna have full solar coverage. So the smart home panel doesn't really involve solar, but your batteries can. So each Delta Pro has a 1600 watt solar input, direct current input from the panels. So what I wanna do and I got the panels ready, I've been dying to do this. So in a future episode, we're gonna clean up our roof, put the roof racking hardware and install solar and feed it directly into the batteries. That way all day they're charging from the sun and powering the house and we can go completely 100% off grid. So yes, we still have the main house to deal with and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there just yet, but thanks to EcoFlow and the smart home panel, our office is officially gonna be able to be off grid when we finish off this project. What are you doing? I you already fixed the office and things. A dad's job is never done, you know that. Come here, let me tell you about the, the software. All right, so I've been playing with the software for a couple days now. It's, um, there's a lot to it, and I'm still kind of figuring out all the interfaces and stuff. But here's a general overview. It shows you the grid, right? And it shows you the house consumption. Right now we're using about 280 watts, which means that refrigerator is turned on, I know that. And we're feeding it from one EcoFlow Delta Pro battery. So the reason why it's feeding the house and not the grid, right now we're totally off grid. And the reason is because of this rule here. 
So if I were to turn it off, let's see what happens. So this rule says that between midnight and 11.10 at night, power the house. It was just for testing, right? But I can turn it off here. Let's see what happens if I turn it off. I heard a relay just turn off, and now we're pulling from the grid. Cool. So this is where I mentioned the time of use plans. If you have energy arbitrage options, program this to say, okay, add a new rule. If, you know, from, <laughs> from this day to that day, every day, let's add a time from midnight to 6 a.m. here in San Diego, that's our time, then recharge Delta Pro, right? Port one and two. And you can set the charge speed and the charge level. That's pretty cool. So I can say, okay, charge at 1800 watts and charge it to 90% because you don't want to run it to 100. Cool. And then I hit save. Please choose the start date. Right. The start date will be today and the end date. I don't know why I can't just do like forever, but all right, a couple of years into the future. And I hit save. So now my batteries are charged from midnight to 6 a.m., which is when the energy prices are cheapest. Then I could say 4 to 9 p.m., power the house. But that's not actually what I'm gonna do. Because my goal is net zero, which is, the more I think about it, kind of crazy, I wanna go all the way. So these batteries are gonna power the house the entire day. While the sun is shining, they'll charge all the way up, and then they'll just run slowly all the way till the next day when the sun comes back out. And I'll share with you if I'm able to do that. But with 3,200 watts of input between the two batteries from solar and all the sunshine that we get, I think we just might, although we do have some trees and some shade later in the day. We'll find out, but we'll share that with you. So that's a quick look at the software. We're gonna do a more in-depth review later. This is kind of our first take in installing it. I still need more time to play with it and, and see how it all handles, but Color me impressed. I think this is a really great option if you're the right kind of person, as I mentioned. The modularity and the ability to expand over time as your needs grow, this might just be something for you guys to check out and take a look at. We'll have a full write-up, installation steps, all that stuff on our website, which will be linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Rick, YouTube DaVinci, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.